Madam President, uh, honorable members of the Oxford Union, distinguished uh, opposition members, uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I feel strangely nervous because I see so many young faces, and I find it hard to believe that you could vote against the American dream, which is a dream that we all share. It's not uniquely American. It's a British dream. It's a French dream. It's a Russian dream. It's a dream from every country in the world. And what is that dream? That dream is that it's a really the dream of parents. And you will someday be parents. It's a dream that their children will have a better future. And there are dimensions of that dream in the US that are perhaps a little bit different from in other countries. Part of this is that each generation will have a higher living standard on average. We also dream in the United States that the ability of someone who comes from extreme poverty to end up as a billionaire or as president of the United States will be maintained and, in any, in, and really fostered through time. And we have many examples in the US history of this happening. We have presidents today who were, came from poverty. We have President of the United States, President uh, Clinton. Uh, we have a president uh, in the history of the United States who was a haberdasher, Harry Truman. We've had druggists. We've had pastors become president. So the highest position can be achieved in the US, and that's part of the American dream. But I think that's also part of the human dream. But then there's also another part of the dream, which is that, that everyone would share in it, that it not be an unequal dream, that it be not just that the average living standard is higher for our children, but that all children would do better than their parents. So we have to be very concerned about inequality. Now, this dream is impossible not to dream. That's why you cannot do anything but walk through the eyes door, because it's your dream, and you are young, and you are vibrant, and you are hopeful. And so therefore, you have to dream with the American dream. You have to be together with us in America dreaming this dream. But what are the challenges of achieving this dream? There are many in the US. We have at least four major problems. We have the issue of national security, which we have been involved in wars. Whether or not you agree or disagree with that effort to, uh, to uh, secure our security in Iraq or Afghanistan, uh, that's a concern. And we have to add in a challenge. And how are we going to deal with that in the future? We have a fiscal policy problem. It's an immense problem. Perhaps the worst fiscal pro policy position, the greatest degree of insolvency of any developed country in the world, because most of our liabilities are off the books, have been carefully kept out of the public's eye by Congress using careful <coughs> language over decades. We have a climate change problem, which we've witnessed in recent months with Hurricane Sandy. And our, and our lack of efforts in that area have uh, endangered not only our own country, but the rest of the, the world. And we have a competition problem. We have a problem of finding our comparative advantage in a world where very poorly trained young Americans are competing with increasingly better trained Chinese, Indians, people from all over the world, and also with machines that are fighting against humans for jobs, with smart machines that are taking our jobs. And these challenges are not, again, unique to the US. They're challenges that are common challenges. So part of the American dream is to find solutions to these problems. And there are solutions. There really are solutions. We have ways to, to approach these problems. In the US, I'll talk for a moment about health care. We have an important requirement that all Americans have health insurance. That's really become universally accepted at this point. But what we've done 
in providing or trying to provide universal health insurance is to engage in what I would call catastrophic success. We are at the point where we almost have that achieved, but we've also done that at a cost which will drive the country bankrupt. But there are ways to fix this. There are ways to get rid of four major healthcare programs, Medicare, Medicaid, employer-based healthcare, and also the new Obamacare program, each of, one, each of which is terribly expensive, by uh, moving to a very simple solution that doesn't throw away private provision of health care, and that would be a universal voucher plan, but quite different from what the Republicans have proposed, one in which everybody gets a voucher, and if you're particularly unhealthy, you get a bigger voucher. And every insurance company has to take your voucher to provide a uniform health plan. And the voucher covers things that are determined by a panel of doctors. And the panel of doctors decides what the country can afford and sets the coverages that way. So that, let's say, we keep it at 10% of GDP. That's affordable. Our health care is now slated to go to 30% of GDP <coughs> at the government expenditure level. That's a bankruptcy scenario. That will kill the American dream. But this simple means of getting universal health insurance, private provision, within a budget, I've just told you the solution. It happens to be the German answer. It happens to be the Swiss answer, the Dutch answer, the Japanese answer, the Canadian answer, if you look fundamentally at what's going on. That is just one example of how we can save our fiscal policy. An energy tax, a carbon tax, is a way of turning around. For the information. Yes. Are you saying that the answer then to all the American problems is to choose solutions from Germany, Switzerland, i.e., everywhere except from America? Well, this is an American solution as well as uh, it's been proposed by an American myself. So uh, I think we have to uh, move away from American arrogance and be open to solutions that are working in other countries, absolutely. So I accept your point, it's well taken. But we have, the, the point I want to make is that there are ways out. There are ways ahead. America is a country that reinvigorates itself, reinvents itself all the time. But fundamentally, and I want to see how much time I have remaining, I uh, asked Madam Treasurer, Secretary, if I could buy some more time, being an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial American, but she uh, so far has refused. Uh, we have solutions. We have solutions for the Social Security system. We have to freeze the existing system, which is 31% underfinanced. We have to give everybody a private account, but a private account that's not enriching Wall Street, that is investing in a global, single global market-weighted index fund of stocks and bonds and real estate funds so that everybody gets the same rate of return. And that where the government guarantees that you get back at retirement age a return that's at least equal to what you put in adjusted for inflation. And that each cohort then has its account balances transformed into inflation protected pensions. That's a solution, a real solution, that would save $60 trillion off of a fiscal gap, a gap separating all the future expenditures measured in the present, measured in present value from the taxes of $222 trillion. So the US has a colossal fiscal problem. But there are solutions. And there are solutions in the area of security. And there are solutions in the area of competition. We need to harness new machines to educate our, our citizens, our children. And that may involve new classrooms, which have screens where the best teachers in the country are educating remotely every American in a uniform way so that we can then equalize educational experiences because of this new technology. So the new technology is not necessarily our enemy. So to conclude, we cannot but dream. We are young. We are vibrant. We are enthusiastic. We are hopeful. We are all Americans. We are all British. We are all German. We are all French. We are all members of this world. And because we're human, and we're aspiring, and we're protective of our children, we have to dream. 
And so therefore, the proposition has only one answer. We all dream the American dream. Thank you.